Hello and welcome back to the Georgia's Live podcast. I'm your host, Travis Smith. Thank you guys for listening. And you can go online to georgeslive.com to see what shows are coming up at Georgia's Majestic Lounge and to get more information on the events. And today we have a very special episode and an interview with Leland Cratcher of the band Trimore Mojo out of Dallas, Texas. They're going to be here at Georgia's this Thursday. And we had a chance to reach out to them and give them a call and chat. And let's go ahead and take you there right now. Hello, Leland. What's up, buddy? How's it going? It is going well, man. Thank you for coming on the podcast with us. We're looking forward to your show here on Thursday, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But uh, let's go ahead and kind of tell people about the band. You guys have Try More Mojo there out of Dallas. That is correct. Uh, All based out of Dallas, living here, um, and got our start about uh, three years ago. I guess it is now, um, and that was when our guitar player Alex Nere came home from uh, college at LSU, mm-hmm. and I was uh, actually living in Denton, Texas at the time, which is where the University of North Texas is. Um, and I was starting to make music and whatnot. And he walked into the apartment one day and had a guitar in his hand and. I asked him if he wanted to make music, and we hugged, and the rest is history. Um, <laughs> nice. So it's uh, it's been a good ride. Um, but uh, recently, we've we've gone through different member changes and stuff, from kind of being a friend and band, just having some fun jamming at the house, to actually moving into being a full touring band. Um, so for the past year now, a little over a year, we've had uh, Evan Lamb and Medrick Greeley, which is our uh, lead guitar player and drummer. Mm-hmm. Join the band, um, and since then we've been uh, been cooking pretty fast. Do you say lead guitar and drummer? No, different people. Oh, okay. I, thought, be, I see. I thought you said one. Okay, cool. I was like, he does both. That's, <laughs> that's the craziest Paris thing monster. I've ever like, heard. How, can I please see this? Like, how does this happen? <laughs> yeah, I definitely never heard anybody say that before. Well, that's awesome. We're definitely yeah, that, looking forward to having you guys here. You, you, it's not your first time to the area, though. You guys were at Backwoods this year. How was that experience? Oh man, it, that is something uh, I will truly never forget. And I know the band won't either. Um, such a magical place on Mulberry mountain, uh, being around that energy is just, uh, unmatched. Um, I've been to other festivals, uh, so the other guys we've, we've gone individually to different things. Um, and we kind of all had a consensus that there was something truly special about the energy on that mountain. Um, it's the perfect size great acts. Um, and then to know that you're being able uh, that you have the opportunity to go play. Um, and we actually got to play two sets. We played, uh, on Saturday evening and then a 3am late night set, uh, with our good friends, deep sequence trading in and out with them. Um, and it was just, it's everything you've ever dreamed of playing music and looking out and seeing so many happy faces and getting to share that experience with those people. Um, just felt like home just felt right. Yeah, man. It's a, it's definitely a wonderful venue for festivals and stuff like that. Is there any other bands that played at the festival that you have not seen before that kind of blew your mind? Oh man. Um, I had never seen, uh, I had seen Aqueous one time and it was in a club. It was a club show. So getting to see them on the main stage of the festival was something very special for me. Um, but, uh, as far as the bands I hadn't seen, um, Headliners, there weren't as many. Uh, I like I had uh, traveled a bit to go see some of those. I've seen mm-hmm. some Umps rock shows, and but seeing Lettuce in the Umphreys was oh, that's better than quite that. a magical experience. Yeah, that was that's uh, individual members' favorite bands separately. So to have them back to back and share one guy being so excited to see Lettuce, and then another two getting so excited that Umps was coming on back and forth, and then feeding off each other and that going out into our group it was just man uh, just electric got just let us amazing. here at the club in november and i'm personally super stoked about it i can't wait i that's that's one that we've considered making a drive for like uh, anytime anybody goes up to georgia's from dallas on the routing uh we we definitely consider going up there pretty heavy i mean it's it's like the fourth stop on a little uh, on a run a, for us because we have we can do the Texas run. Well, there's that November fourth, fifth, and sixth. You guys should just come for the whole the whole time. I think uh, Perpetual Groove is here on November fourth, and then oh man, yeah, and on on the fifth we've got a show. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about it yet, but it's definitely someone mm-hmm. you'd want to mm-hmm. see. 
So yeah, man, okay. it's, we're super okay. stoked to have you guys here. This is a uh, a community here that is very open to the jam and the funk and the groove and the type of stuff that you guys are doing. So I think it's going to go really well, especially having Cadello on the show. That's a a super awesome opener that you guys have on Thursday. Speaking of a uh, deep Absolutely. sequence, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was just, I, I love Cadella and wanted to make sure they get the love and uh, oh, uh, appreciation that they deserve. Yeah, they are, absolutely. They, we saw them in Houston and I've listened, I've been listening to their music as much as I can find. Uh, being synth and Ableton oriented myself, their, their music is just fantastic. You should definitely check them out if you haven't. Yeah, for sure. And um, you guys, speaking of deep sequence earlier, uh, you guys are going to have a little, a little stand in action with Jonathan. Yeah. So uh, those, those are our good buddies. We've, uh, played two shows with them, three shows with them, but one of those being backwards. But man, it just it felt like brotherhood as soon as we met them. Um, the the music matches so well with ours, and then the personalities are just to be it's just good hangs, good music. It's, yeah, they're it's such amazing. Good dudes. Um, Super talented. They are, man. Well. It's just right. Like I mean, it's it's cool to have people that are as talented as they are, be as humble and as as committed to the scene. Um, as they are, it, those, those are the type of people that we try to line up with. It's not about what we are doing. It's about what our community and what the scene can do and grow together. Um, so to meet people as supportive as them, um, and then match as well musically as we have is, is uh, you know, for the cliche, a dream come true. But, uh, yeah, he's going to be sitting in with us. He, I believe it'll be his first or second day as a Fayetteville resident, actually. Oh, wow. So we're celebrating his move up here. And I think they're coming nice. from Little Rock. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be, it's going to be fun. He's going to sit in for some of the sets and then I think we're going to do some super jams at the end of the night. So all around, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be super awesome. I've been jamming your guys' uh, space junk volume one at the house. Appreciate that. So to kind of, and that's you guys' release. That's a live album, isn't it? Uh, it is. Um, so we have a lot of stuff on archive, uh, and, uh, miscellaneous things on SoundCloud and whatnot, but um, we were looking to just have, we, we've been asked by whenever we were on tour uh, in a lot of cities if we were on Spotify and we would tell people uh, archive and SoundCloud and whatnot, but uh, we seem to find a lot of people that wanted that Spotify cut, so um, yeah. Where we else can show, people go outside some, of Spotify? You say you have some stuff in other spots outside of there? Yeah, so that's archive uh, archive.org, which is just a really great um, free website to go that people have a bunch of shows hosted from all different kinds of bands. I mean, from Snarky Puppy to Humphreys and back to, you know, early 2000s type stuff. There's a, there's a lot of great recordings on there. And we've just had some tapers that have, we've had the pleasure of having on our shows and um, they throw them up on archive afterwards and we get to go back and listen. <laughs> it's been yeah. fun. Um, but uh, that's, that's definitely where a lot of, a lot of that music that's even on Spotify came from. Um, is just from live shows that we did, uh, or I think at this point it was like six months ago or so in early March, um, and that most of those recordings came from. Um, and uh, we've just been kind of growing on it since. But yeah, it's it's all it's all coming uh, coming around to a studio EP that's coming out uh, either later this year or early next year. We're going to track in November, so we don't want to rush anything. Um, but we're really excited about getting a, a polished release out as well. Cool. So that's what you guys are doing now is writing. Uh, yeah, a little bit of writing, um, a little bit of knowing. Uh, well, I say knowing. Uh, we know what songs we're going to take in there, uh, but it's going to be a matter of what does the studio version sound like? Because um, so, since so much of our music is based on in, the improv and the jam, um, we've got to see what we can compose improvisationally in the studio as compared to just with the energy on stage. So I bet I'm that's excited to be, see uh, what comes out of it. I bet that's got to be fun to kind of look at your songs in a different light and performance space of doing it in a studio as opposed to a live kind of on in the moment type feel. How do you, it guys, is, yeah, it, it, how do you guys come up with your sure. songs? How do you write? So, yeah, that's, that's uh, an interesting dynamic shift that we've come into um, recently is that we have always written towards the live show um, in the past three years. That's, Really, all we've done has been primarily gigging um, studios here and there, but uh, it's the writing process definitely is gauged around a lot of uh, essentially holding down things and letting the other guys explore. Uh, so 
whoever may come up with the initial riff for the song or even getting more micro inside of the jam in something that's already written. Um, it starts with somebody holding it down on something that we can latch onto mm-hmm. and then grow from there. Um, which is of course the tradition of jamming. That's, that's what we're doing is sharing the space and listening, um, and growing off one another, uh, and learning how to take up your space and filling your role, not doing too much. Um, but that's actually kind of become our writing process instead of sitting down and writing out a whole song and knowing how this part goes here and that part goes there. And, um, it's never really been like that for us. We will come up with something and bring it to the other guys and that energy will be exciting. And, that'll translate over to let me try to, you know, riff on that for a minute and then that locks in and then that idea will turn into another one. Or while I'm sound designing, Alex will do something with his pedals or Evan. It's just, it's a very, um, just lightning type process. Like a little spark happens there and then that travels across over the other side and then that hits, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a very fun, awesome. um, interact. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's been very just free flowing. And I think you can hear that in our music. Um, it's not as, as we don't have, uh, traditional songwriting structure. Uh, it's much more of just kind of grooves that turn into songs. Uh, but we've had to narrow that back uh, and kind of try to come to a little bit more of a point with our songwriting and, and be a little bit more functional as we're gearing up for the studio. So we're really starting to flex the muscles and, and work out things that we've never done before. Um, and I think that that's only helping grow the sound and uh, bringing us closer together as musicians. Nice. Yeah. Before we started this interview, you mentioned that you guys have already played 60 shows this year. Uh, yeah. Uh, this past Saturday was our 60th show, um, since January 1st. Is this the year that you guys are going the hardest? Is this your first touring hard year? Yes. So beforehand it was really making sure, um, that we just had it together and that we all really wanted to, grind like this on the road and and we were ready to do that um as a group or uh, individually and as a group i should say um and as i was saying medrick and evan have uh, only been in the band now for like 14 months or something along those lines mm-hmm. so uh, we're in august now so that's eight so these eight months have just been um a committed go at it for all of us and uh, the first four were kind of just figuring out, all right, do you like this genre? Do you like doing this? And cause Medrick and Evan both don't come from the jam world at all. Um, Evan is a classically trained guitar player. Medrick comes from the fusion, um, kind of crazy elite musician world. His, his peers blow my mind who he hangs out with. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, it, so, so finding the genre together, um, then led to all this touring, but, uh, I gotta say we, we've just gotten closer every time we get in the van, every trip we go on, no matter what adversity hits like a trailer tire blowing out or engines not working or gas can't go in a gas tank. And yeah. we have to have a trucker guy help fix our tank. <laughs> I mean, all this stuff is just, uh, at four in the morning. That was a fun story. Yeah. But, whenever I think um, back of touring, I always think about setting inside of a mechanic's garage, getting the tire changed. That sounds day. about right, man. I think that's what tour is. You know, you take pictures of the pretty stuff, but what it actually is, is just, you know, frustration. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with these guys that just now kind of got into the jam scene, have you introduced them to some new bands that they're digging? Oh yeah. Um, it's been amazing to see this, this world open up to them and, uh, hear it in their playing, hear it in how they approach songwriting. And, um, it's, it's been fantastic. I think, uh, I think on has had a lot of influence over both of them. Um, as they, both come from a technical, um, very skilled world of it's like jazz fusion style. It doesn't hurt to go show them some some machine like Umphreys. Um, so that's that's been good for them. But then they really, particularly Medrick, um, our drummer, loves lettuce. Uh, Adam Dyche has been a huge influence. All his work with Schofield and mm-hmm. uh, everything. I mean, you can hear it in his playing, and he's found his own way to do it. I love it a lot. And then Evan loves Soul Life, our other guitar player. So the lettuce part, so that, that's kind of where that lettuce on three back to back was like, look what jam music can be. We can go from pocket funk to machine epicness. You yeah, know? Uh, that's what um, I do. Me too. And you can <laughs> hear too. it on your guys's 
recordings, you know? Like, you can hear all those dynamics. I think that's super cool. There's uh, probably about six or seven years ago, I, d- I do talent buying and stuff as well. And I was getting an email from an agent buddy of mine, and he was like, hey, man, there's this band called Talk that you need to check out. Nobody really knows who they are yet, but they're, I think they're going to be a big thing. And at, at the time, I remember talking to my friends, and I was like, man, there's a lot of, like, a, there's jam bands, of course, but I feel like there's, like, EDM and stuff. At the time, I think, like, dubstep was, like, the hot thing. And, uh, Sounds about right, six years ago. Yeah, so, and we were talking, I was like, man, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little uh, fusion between, like, the jam stuff that's usually traditional instruments. I bet you start seeing a lot more of electronic elements being brought in and people playing electronic, you know, what we think of as live electronica and stuff, you know, kind of like what the Cadella boys are doing. And I was thinking, Definitely. man, that's probably on the way up, I would imagine, and I kept talking to that agent, and I eventually got that talk show I was wanting to get here in Fayetteville. They actually played at a, a venue here in town, and then eventually came back and played some awesome shows here at George's. But it's been interesting to see, you know, there's there's the old school jam genre that we all know from um, back in the day, you know, of course, like Grateful Dead and stuff like that. And then moving on into the you know, perpetual grooves and stuff like that. And it's crazy to see the jam scene with so, so many different subgenres and different directions that you can go with it. And a lot of the jazz folks that I play with and that I'm friends with really latch on to a lot of these bands because there's so much jazz and fusion influence in a lot of it. So it's been f- it's, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and it's it's cool to see. It's got me into it, man. I wasn't like a into jam bands that much just because i haven't been around people that really listen to them but through working in the business and stuff i've been exposed to like 20 new bands that are like i know i'll listen to for the rest of my life within that genre because of the the ability to go to so many different genres and grooves and things like you know like snarky puppy bringing in almost like a hip-hop influence on their drumming and bass lines and stuff it like Mm -hmm. gets your head bobbing so it's yeah, man. It's definitely fun to see, and I'm glad that you guys are like capturing that and going hard at it. Every time I get online, I see that you guys are playing somewhere or doing something. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to stay busy, man. It it doesn't doesn't hurt, but um, that I, I just couldn't agree more with what you said. To even to the point of where it's it's what brought me into jam. I've only been playing my instrument for three years Uh, when the band started the reason i started playing keys was because they wanted to start a band Um, i came from the ableton world i came from grizz grammatic dubstep type stuff i mean and then dubstep took me to grizz and grammatic and pretty lights and big g and all this type of stuff um, even in the late night radio and so down and people like that now um but uh to, to see that blend, to hear a sun squabby and be like, wait a minute, that's a band. Yeah. Dude, um, crazy. and to understand it's unreal. Like to, to use the computer as a person, it's an instrument. It's another member of your band. It's not what you're relying on. You can, you can create around that. Um, it's unreal to me and talk. We actually got the open for talk in Dallas last year and seeing the machine that is talking, the sound that those four guys can get, it's just unreal. Um, and the drumming man. style matches up. Yeah, it's, they really are. It's, it's, it was one of, I think that was the first band because we had opened for Papadocio earlier in the year. Um, and Medrick coming from the fusion jazz world was like, okay, that's, that's, um, that's amazing. But that's kind of like dance oriented music for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's that world. But then to hear talk be so fusion, so jazzy, I mean, and Matt, metal. the guitar player, they got straight up metal Matt, all, the, all the time. It's just like, yes, like with it. And it's just, and you see Isaac just nailing these drum parts. And it's like, dude. And then they just go to this pocket funk deliciousness. Like I, I, I absolutely love them so much. And, and getting to experience that live, I think was a pivotal point for the band. Um, it really showed Medrick what this music could be and the, the potential to bring in the things that, um, he loves and knows already and to see it appreciated by the jam world was a great thing. Cause that's, that's my favorite part is I come from electronic DJs, like turntable style. Mm-hmm. He comes from full 15 piece bands, um, fusion jazz with horn sections and singers. 
and the fact the fact that we found a genre where both of us can play together and it's appreciated by all the people in the crowd is such a magic thing for me. Yeah, it's, um, it's and, a great thing. I just yeah, love it. So let's uh, let's point people online. Where can anybody go to find out about the band? Where do you where do you want to send them? So um, Instagram and Facebook are definitely where we're the most active. Um, both of those are Try More Mojo. Um, when you don't know what to do, you try more mojo. <laughs> and so that'll be at Try More Mojo on Instagram. On Facebook, it's Try More Mojo. Um, and we also have TryMoreMojo.com. Um, so pretty much anywhere that you want to try more mojo, you can find us. And I think we're the only one out there yeah, that, uh, under that sure name, too. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't think it's too too normal. <laughs> yeah, for anybody listening, if it's before Thursday, come check them out this Thursday at George's Majestic Lounge with Cadella Leela, and I appreciate you coming on the podcast, buddy. Thank you so much, Travis. It's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah, no problem, and I will see you Thursday. We'll see you then. Thanks. Thank you guys for listening to the Georgia's Live podcast. I am your host, Travis Smith. Thank you guys for listening. You can go online to georgeslive.com to see more information on what shows are coming up. I'd like to thank Leland and the band Try More Mojo for coming on and chatting with us. Be sure to go check them out Thursday night. It's going to be a killer show. And thank you guys for listening. See you next time.